Your doctor probably told you to watch what you eat when you get diagnosed with diabetes. But what if when you eat matters just as much as what you eat? Right now, there are a lot of people on social media singing the praises of intermittent fasting for diabetes, but it's crucial for you to know the difference between fact and hype when your health is at stake. That's why we analyzed over 50 clinical studies on fasting protocols specifically for diabetics. What we found might change how you think about managing your blood sugar forever. Let's start with the most widely studied and accessible approach, one that doesn't require dramatic lifestyle changes but still delivers impressive results. The 16-8 method outperforms traditional diets. The 16-8 fasting method, the most studied protocol for diabetes, is simple for most people to understand and is easy to manage. In a nutshell, you eat during an 8-hour window and fast for 16 hours daily. In direct comparison with calorie-restricted diets, people with type 2 diabetes lost 4.56 kilograms more fat in just 12 weeks by following the 16-8 method, without counting calories or changing what they ate, only when they ate. This gives your body a longer break from insulin production, which improves insulin sensitivity, helping your cells respond better to insulin and potentially reducing the need for medication over time. Many find it easier than traditional diets because it's simple and reduces decision fatigue. You're not constantly calculating carbs or points. All you're doing is paying attention to the clock. If you've ever felt overwhelmed planning diabetic-friendly meals all day, this method might be the best solution for you. But wait until you see how the timing of your eating window can make an even bigger difference. Early time-restricted feeding hacks your circadian rhythm. Most people doing 16-8 fasting eat from noon to 8 p.m., but new research suggests this timing may not be ideal for diabetics. A Johns Hopkins study found that eating 80% of your calories before 1 p.m. when your body is most insulin sensitive can lower blood sugar by 20% compared to eating later in the day. This is because your pancreas works best in the morning and early afternoon, so front-loading your calories takes advantage of your body's natural rhythms. An added bonus, eating earlier also improves sleep quality, while late night meals can disrupt sleep and worsen blood sugar the next day. While this approach may mean adjusting your social routine, the metabolic benefits are clear. Your body truly handles the same foods differently depending on the time of day you eat them. Does this mean you should skip dinner entirely? Not necessarily, but the next protocol takes this concept even further. The 5 to 2 protocol shows promising HbA1c reductions. Unlike daily time-restricted eating, the 5 to 2 method lets you eat normally 5 days a week and cut calories to 500 to 600 on two non-consecutive days. A study in JAMA Network Open found that people with type 2 diabetes using this approach for six months lowered their average level of blood glucose, otherwise known as HbA1c, by 0.81%, about the same as adding a new diabetes drug, but without the side effects. On low calorie days, your body switches to burning stored fat, which helps clear out fatty deposits in the liver and pancreas that worsen insulin resistance. The 5 to 2 method is flexible, allowing you to pick which days to restrict calories, making it easier to stick with long term. Many find it simpler to be very strict just two days a week, and some even notice improved mental clarity on fasting days after an initial adjustment. Would you rather be disciplined just two days a week instead of every day? That might make the 5 to 2 method the right fit for you. But before you can start any fasting regimen, you need to know about the serious risks for certain diabetics. Type 1 diabetics face five times higher hypoglycemia risk. 
While intermittent fasting offers promising benefits for people with type 2 diabetes, the situation is very different and far riskier for those with type 1 diabetes. Research from Ramadan fasting, when many Muslims with diabetes abstain from food and drink from dawn to sunset, shows that people with type 1 diabetes experienced hypoglycemic episodes at five times the usual rate during fasting. This isn't just uncomfortable, it can be life-threatening. The reason is simple. People with type 1 diabetes can't naturally lower their insulin production during fasting because their bodies don't make insulin at all. If their medication isn't adjusted with extreme precision, their blood sugar can plummet to dangerous levels. For those with type 1 diabetes who are still considering fasting, continuous glucose monitoring isn't just helpful, it's absolutely essential. Every fasting period must be carefully planned and supervised by a healthcare professional to ensure safety. The bottom line is that type 1 and type 2 diabetes react to fasting in completely different ways. What can be healing for one can actually be harmful for the other. But most general advice about fasting rarely makes this critical distinction between type 2 and type 1, so if you have diabetes, it needs to be something you are critically aware of. The next protocol shows even more dramatic differences between diabetes types. Alternate day fasting reverses insulin resistance. Alternate day fasting is one of the boldest strategies out there, alternating between days of normal eating and days where you eat very little, about 500 calories. In a remarkable case series published in BMJ, three men with type 2 diabetes completely reversed their insulin resistance using this method, and all were able to stop insulin therapy within just a month, an almost unheard of result with standard treatments. This approach works by quickly depleting the liver's sugar stores, which forces the body to switch over to burning fat for fuel. That metabolic switch directly tackles the root problem in type 2 diabetes, insulin resistance. What's even more interesting is that after the first two weeks, participants actually reported feeling less hungry on fasting days as their bodies adopted to burning fat. However, alternate day fasting is not perfect and still carries risks. Because it can cause dramatic shifts in blood sugar, it absolutely requires close medical supervision and careful medication adjustments to stay safe. The results can be dramatic, but also so can the risks if it's not done properly. It raises a serious question though. Would you consider such an extensive and intensive approach if it meant you may one day leave your medications behind? But before you get too excited, you need to know about a serious risk that most fasting advocates never mention. The hidden danger of diabetic ketoacidosis. Fasting and low-carb diets may help some people manage diabetes, but doing both together isn't always safe, especially for those with type 1 diabetes or certain medications. There are a significant number of cases in which people with type 1 diabetes developed diabetic ketoacidosis, or DKA, a life-threatening emergency, after starting fasting and keto diets together. Even some people with type 2 diabetes on SGLT2 inhibitors, a common diabetes medication, have ended up in DKA during fasting. Why does this happen? Fasting and cutting carbs both raise ketone levels. If you don't have enough insulin in your body or from your medication, these ketones can quickly build up to dangerous levels. So how do we keep safe? Always check your ketone levels when fasting, especially if your blood sugar suddenly goes up. This can be an early warning sign of DKA, even if you haven't eaten. Start with no more than 12 hours of fasting, and only increase after medical supervision. If you're on SGLT2 inhibitors or have type 1 diabetes, talk to your doctor before trying any fasting or keto plan. 
Most doctors don't routinely warn about this specific risk, so knowing it can help you avoid serious health complications. Ethnic differences in fasting response. Did you know that your background might affect how well intermittent fasting works for diabetes? Surprising new research from the NIH shows that people of color who are more likely to develop diabetes actually get even bigger benefits from fasting than white-skinned people or those of European origin. They saw greater drops in blood sugar and better insulin sensitivity using the same fasting plans. Why? It may be because these groups of people often start out with higher insulin resistance, so their bodies respond more dramatically to fasting. What does this mean for you? If you're from a higher risk group, fasting could be a smart option to try early, not just as a last resort. Plus, many people needed less medication to keep their blood sugar in check. Most diabetes advice doesn't talk about these differences, but knowing them could help you get better results from your treatment. But wait until you see what happens when fasting is combined with specific exercise timing. Fasted exercise amplifies insulin sensitivity. Exercising during a fast has a significant impact on your blood sugar levels. A study from the International Diabetes Federation found that exercising before you eat can boost your insulin sensitivity by 73%, much more than the same workout after a meal. This benefit can last up to 36 hours. Why does it work? Fasting empties out your muscles' sugar stores, so when you exercise, your muscles become hungrier for glucose and pull more out of your bloodstream. Want to try it? Simply plan your workout near the end of your fasting window. Even a quick 20-minute walk before you eat can help your blood sugar after meals. This combo also helps burn stubborn belly fat, the kind that is most linked to diabetes. Ever wonder why your blood sugar changes based on when you exercise? Now you know. And now for our most surprising finding, autophagy, the cellular cleanup that regenerates pancreatic function. One of the most exciting discoveries in fasting research is autophagy. This is your body's way of cleaning out damaged cells. Fasting for 16 hours or more can kickstart this process in your pancreas, possibly helping to regenerate the insulin-producing cells that type 2 diabetes was once thought to destroy for good. A breakthrough study in Cell found that cycles of fasting and refeeding led to pancreatic repair in diabetic animals. Now, human trials are underway to see if this works for people too. Why does this matter? It means fasting might actually help reverse some diabetes damage, not just manage symptoms. To boost autophagy, longer fasts of 18 to 24 hours, once or twice a week, may be needed, but always with medical supervision. This cellular cleanup is not only great for diabetes, but it may also lower your cancer risk and slow aging all over your body. Could the future of diabetes care be regular fasting instead of lifelong medication? The latest research is starting to say yes. The medication adjustment protocol many doctors miss. If you're fasting with diabetes, some medications need special attention. Insulin and sulfonylureas can cause your blood sugar to drop too low during fasting, so their doses often need to be cut by 25-50%. to SGLT2 inhibitors may need to be paused to avoid serious risks. Meanwhile, metformin and GLP-1 agonists usually require little to no change and might even work better with fasting. A Johns Hopkins protocol helps adjust medications safely based on fasting length and diabetes type. People using this guide had 83% fewer problems than those who didn't. With the right medication plan, you can fast safely and may even need less medication over time. 
Many doctors aren't trained in these new protocols, so knowing this can help you manage your diabetes smarter and safer. If you want to get your morning blood sugar under control and make the most of intermittent fasting, be sure to check out our video, The Four Keys to Lower Fasting Glucose, How to Reduce Blood Sugar in the Morning. We'll share practical, easy to follow tips that help you start your day with the healthier blood sugar levels. Just click the image on the screen and remember to click like and subscribe. I hope to see you at the next video.